Dan Larson here, and I'm at the photo booth taking a look at some Acid Rain World products. The first time ever that I've had the opportunity to put my hands on or even be in the same room as any Acid Rain World products. Uh, I see other collectors I see out there posting images on Instagram all the time, but I've never had the opportunity to dive into that mythology myself. That all changes today with an assortment of the brand new B25 figures, vehicles, and accessories. Full disclosure... Beaver and Scronex, I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, the companies that produce these items, sent them to me for free. However, the opinions expressed here are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed this content before it was uploaded. I also want to stress the warning on the box that these are not toys. They're not toys. Uh, they are adult collectibles, small parts, choking hazards. It's intended for ages. 16 plus in the booth here is the complete wave one selection from the new b25 line which is a smaller scale assortment than the regular acid rain world items the regular line is four inch scale uh for scale purposes here's a four inch, this is three and three quarter inch boba fett so you can see how small they are uh the regular line is four inch scale and they look incredible uh in pretty much every photo i've ever seen and they cross over nicely with any gi joe or other three and three quarter inch or four inch figures that you already own. Uh, for this new line, the scale, like I said, has been shifted down to two and a half inches. That's the 2.5, 2.5 inches in B25. This allows for more vehicles, larger and more complex vehicles, and potentially some buildings as well that would have been impossible, uh, too expensive <laughs> to produce at the four inch scale. Uh, Hasbro tried a similar approach with their own mini scaled figures recently, maybe a couple years ago with uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And I don't know if those are still happening or if they already died. That The lack of detail and articulation on those figures, the Hasbro figures, uh, didn't excite me personally, which is something that Beaver and Scronex, Scronex? Uh, they've uh, they've fully addressed uh, those concerns. Uh, these figures are incredible, highly posable, in fact, more posable than some figure lines that stand two or three times their size. Uh, they've got joints pretty much everywhere, knees, they've got thigh rotation, they've got... Let's, uh, let's talk about this real quick. I have a cat, and uh, she won the fight the other day, so uh, we don't need to hear about that in the comments. Um, they've got neck, pivot, biceps, shoulders, elbows, uh, wrist. They've got waists. Uh, it's uh, it's it's <laughs> it's a level of articulation that, like I said, you don't even see on uh, figures. Uh, Marvel Select, I'm looking at you. You don't even see on figures that uh, are much uh, are much much larger than them. Uh, and I apologize if I'm completely blocking the view of these. They are so tiny. Um, you can see they have these kind of uh, like Lego minifigure style hands here too. Um, which uh, we'll talk about that in a minute here, but uh, uh, let's talk about that right now. The Lego minifigure style hands, they, they break the illusion a little bit, um, but when you have them holding onto the equipment, there's all kinds of like handholds here. Uh, there's handles in the cockpits. Uh, there's handlebars on the mini bike here, on the speeder, uh, and then of course all the weapons and stuff. You know, when, when they're when they're holding on to those things um, or carrying it, you don't even notice, and eventually you won't even care. There's too much cool stuff happening here uh, for that to really be an issue. The kind of detail, that kind of detail, uh, fades away as you focus on the larger composition of uh, all these elements involved. Um, there's a three pack. There's a three pack of uh, jungle jungle soldiers uh, that are armed to the teeth with uh, mini guns. This guy over here, he's got the mini gun. Uh, mini guns, rocket launchers. This guy's here. Uh, he's uh, also from that three pack. He's got the rocket launcher. Uh, the rocket is removable from the front, and he even comes with uh, this pouch that comes off his back here. Uh, he's got uh, additional. He's got additional rockets in there uh, to reload when he runs out of ammo. But uh, they are armed to the teeth, miniguns, rocket launchers, machine guns, pistols, all this stuff. They've got pistols, machine guns, miniguns, uh, rocket launchers, it's these three guys here. Uh, basically these two guys are the same, and then I don't know if he's like the uh, squad leader or uh, commander or whatever he is, but um, the uh, worn look, the battle-tested aesthetic, uh, the, the the numbers, the, all the details in their helmets and the paint schemes, uh, it's gorgeous. The weapons fit tightly in their hands, the soft rubber uh, armor uh, that they have sort of overlaid over them. It doesn't hinder their articulation at all. Uh, they're the kind of figures that I prefer, especially for a line where I'm not that familiar with the pre-existing mythology. Uh, taking them purely at surface value, these figures could be robots or individual personalities. You know, they all have like these sort of gas mask look going uh, with the helmets and stuff. Uh, they, they don't have like individual personalities or, you know, they, they could be like clones or something. It's open to your interpretation. You can dig into the mythology which has been created or just let your imagination run since they lack those specific facial characteristics. And while I do love removable helmets, it's probably best that these are not. 
uh, because I would lose them uh, pretty much immediately. Uh, there's two speeders. I'm gonna get these guys out of the way here for a second. This is the three figure pack. Uh, there's two speeders. Get all these guns off to the side. Here. I'll move these guys back a bit too. So we can focus. Uh, so there's two speeders in wave one. They're exactly the same other than uh, paint scheme, color style, that sort of thing. Oh, wait, guys. Um, the first one here, uh, the blue one is the R711 speeder Mark 1R. Uh, he comes with that uh, same, the blue pilot. Um, the uh, sand colored piece comes with a, it's a larger pack here. I'll show you the box. I mean, you know, I'll show you the box now. This is the, uh, this is a deluxe set, the 88 Sand deluxe set. It comes with the uh, Robo Mech there, uh, two figures, and the speeder. Um, uh, both can be converted uh, from speeder mode to assault or attack mode. Uh, you can see there's a little mini gun under here and um, the uh, handlebars and this cockpit. Let's see if I can get it to open here. This opens here. My hands are too big for these tiny little items. This uh, cockpit sort of swings back like that, and you can put them in, take them out. Um, you can actually, there's uh, two clips here. There's a clip here, you can see better on the bottom here. There's these uh, two clips. Uh, you can, like when you're up here in assault mode, you can clip some guns to that if you want. Uh, but uh, the real point of that is that it actually, these come as a set, they match. Um, what you can do is there's these uh, attachments on the back here, and so this can store for transport. You wouldn't keep the driver in there necessarily, but he can transport that around. And over here, this one, he's still got the clips on the back as well. So you could very easily have him transporting that around uh, oops, in robot mode as well, or mech mode. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's one of those details that I really, <laughs> that I really do appreciate. Um, it's it's those kinds of details that really immerse you in the world and, and add value to uh, these kinds of items. Um, the two stronghold mechs, that's what these are called, strongholds, uh, they can be converted from compact transport mode to the standing uh, attack mode. Uh, and keep in mind, these are terms that I, I'm using here. They, they're unofficial terms to my knowledge, other than that they're the names of, you know, the names of the product, stronghold, speeder. Uh, Etc. Uh, I don't know if the different modes have specific names or designations. For me, it's like box tank, robo mech. That's about uh, the extent uh, of my knowledge of it. Each one is a unique combat uh, build. The sand stronghold. Uh, I'm leaving them in these modes like this uh, to just to show you the two differences. This one opens up the same way as uh, this one does. Um, this one has the dual machine guns on top, and these are actually uh, switch activated. Uh, rocket launchers here if I can remember how to do it. Uh, I know this opens as a panel and these there it is it's this switch here uh, and they open up on the front like that there you go. Um, the jungle stronghold has the two Vulcan cannons uh, on the top and the highly articulated uh, each knuckle on these hands uh, is articulated uh, it's got two points, so it's got the part where it meets the hand, and then it's got the first knuckle. These two, the other two fingers here are connected. So you have one, you have the index finger, and then the middle finger and the pinky here are connected. But then this thumb does uh, pivot uh, and swivel uh, there as well. Then he's got, you know, elbows and shoulders and uh, ankle pivots and hips, and he uh, can turn at the waist as well. So it's a pretty articulated uh, figure there. Uh, both have the opening cockpits uh, with the pilots inside which uh, I gotta snap this off the back to open up the cockpit. Um, that's the, I mean, that's the kind of thing I dream about. Not to mention that you can open the entire cockpit uh, or just the top part here, just this windscreen to get a quick survey of the battlefield again. It's, it's the details that really make it so nice. Um, while they aren't toys, uh, per se, I'm still going to refer to it as a playability factor. Part of the draw here is the customizability and modularity of parts. Uh, there are adapters. Uh, this one I've got attached here uh, to the sand stronghold. And then over here, uh, it's these two pieces that uh, can attach to the different parts. Like, I'm going to pull this gun off. Uh, there's all kinds of modular ports all over the place. Uh, in fact, even the speeders have these same sized uh, mo modular ports uh, where you can attach 
to the top. Uh, and then over here, if we wanted to, we could take this whole arm piece off of the sand stronghold and I'll uh, open it up so you can see. So this is the sort of rocket launcher arm mode. These just push right back in. They don't actually uh, fire out. Um, it's just the spring activated mechanism to sort of project uh, project them out of the, the openings there. But uh, this could then be attached to this piece over here via the... So now you've got uh, a customized modular piece over on your mech over here. We could put the other arm up here. We could take these two guns off of this guy. Uh, and then again, there are small holes all over the place where we could attach these guns for a different look. Um, that's, uh, you know, part of the real draw of this line. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, you can, like I said, we can take this and we can put these down here. You know, it's, uh, it's only limited by <laughs> your imagination uh, what you want to do with those uh, things. Um, these, uh, the, the adapters can be attached to all the vehicles to move the parts around uh, for different artillery arrangements. Um, you can, uh, obviously as the line progresses, more options will be made available. Uh, he's got these little feet. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that. I don't know if I pointed that out. He's got little feet to stand it up uh, when he's in uh, assault mode there. Uh, more options will be made available. More guns, more parts, uh, and more options uh, to create your ideal team of troops. Uh, the plastic does feel durable. Uh, time will tell how well it holds up to repeated transformations and parts changing uh, like modern transformers. Um, some pieces are designed to pop out if too much stress is placed on them. Better that pieces pop off than break. Uh, pricing for the whole line is, uh, I think it's competitive with the import and indie toy market. Uh, all these items um, are, uh, the, these prices I'm going to give you, they're in uh, U.S. dollars. Um, the site uh, lists them in uh, Hong Kong dollars. So the blue speeder set, get these boxes back. The uh, blue speeder set uh, goes for, it's about $25 U.S., The K6, sorry, I don't want to put these so far away. The K6 Jungle Soldier uh, three-figure assortment, this is about 35 bucks. The Jungle Stronghold set, which was uh, just the Stronghold and the figure, uh, this goes for about 65 bucks. Uh, and then the Sand Deluxe set, which is uh, the biggest set of them all. It's uh, the Stronghold with his arm that's uh, MIA now. It's the Speeder, it's the two figures. Uh, that goes for about uh, $95. Um, global release date was September 27, 2017, which means they are available for purchase right now at b25shop.com. More items, more mechs, more weapons, more figures are on the way. b25.com for more information about Acid Rain World Toys, b25shop.com to order today. Check them out on Instagram as well, b25 underscore official. Thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have any Acid Rain items, and tell me what I've been missing out on. Thanks. Later.